Thank you, Speaker. And uh, please note that I'll be dividing my time with the member from Scarborough Southwest. Again, thank you for the opportunity to address this esteemed group for the first time. It is truly my pleasure and honour to sit with every member of this House and to be part of the 40th Parliament of Ontario. Given that this is my first speech, I trust you will indulge me a bit as I will be thanking many who have given me this opportunity. First and foremost, to my constituents in Windsor West, I am truly humbled by the trust and faith you have placed in me to represent the area that I have called home my whole life. During the election, I met with and spoke with thousands in the riding, speaking to them about the progress accomplished in our community and listening to their concerns. There is one promise that I personally made through the campaign, and that is to continue listening to their concerns and to work as hard as I can to effectively represent them. To the many volunteers that gave their time and energy to my campaign, thank you. And of course, to my family, my husband John and my boys, Anthony and Joshua, for the sacrifices they are making to allow me this opportunity. I will be forever grateful. I've had the distinct pleasure of working with many leaders throughout my career, each of whom has made their mark on me and provided me with lessons that have allowed me to grow with the courage, strength, and discipline required of an MPP. I would be remiss if I didn't mention those that came before me in this chamber. Of course, many of you here today either worked with Sandra Pupatello or have heard of the former member of Windsor West. First elected in 1995, Sandra certainly made her mark not only for the people of Windsor West but across the province. She held many portfolios while in government, including community and social services, women's issues, education, economic development and trade, and international trade and investment. Even in opposition, she was making her mark, starting with the delivery of cereal boxes to then Premier Harris in support of breakfast programs. Does anyone remember that? I had the privilege of working with Sandra for five years, and believe me, there were many lessons learned. Locally, Sandra worked tirelessly for our community. Many have said that I have big shoes to fill following Sandra as the MPP for Windsor West. I'm not so much as filling her shoes as continuing in the plan to move Windsor West forward. Some of you may even remember another fine member from the area previous, previously known as Windsor Sandwich, William Rye. Yes. Bill was a member and cabinet minister under Premier David Peterson from 1981 to 1990 and served in both opposition and government. I also had the privilege of working with Bill and count him as a friend and mentor. Speaker, there's another former staffer of Minister Rye that sits with us in this house, the current Minister of Finance and member for Windsor Tecumseh, the Honourable Dwight Duncan. I am grateful for his support and friendship. I will continue to need his good counsel and support as we work for the people of Windsor and Ontario together. I represent a community that is rich in history, the gateway to Ontario, and home to one of the most diverse communities in Canada. Windsor West has been this province's southern frontier for more than 300 years. Windsor is often remembered as the automotive capital of Canada, and we are proud of our automotive and manufacturing history. In 1904, Ford Motor Company established its everlasting footprint in Windsor, along with General Motors, Chrysler, and many other car and truck companies there is little question that Windsor put Canada on wheels. Windsor's history began as a European settlement in 1701, when French-speaking migrants established a community on the south shore of the Detroit River. The settlement grew to include British migrants, creating the town of Sandwich. This was the site where General William Hull invaded Upper Canada and later withdrew upon word of forces advancing under the leadership of Major General Isaac Brock and Chief Tecumseh. These heroic acts, along with many other acts, will be commemorated next year for the bicentennial of the War of 1812. I invite all Ontarians to come join us in Windsor and Essex County to celebrate our proud history. Windsor's multiculturalism and openness is not only a current reality, but has been the area's culture throughout its history. We have been a beacon for settlement for new Canadians, 
not foreigners as some may call them, but new Canadians from every region of this globe. Since the 19th century, many have sought refuge and established a new and free life in what is known as Windsor. The area's involvement in the Underground Railroad and respect for all members of the human race reflects the values we deeply cherish as Ontarians. The cultural diversity in Windsor West is a model for all Ontarians. Our residents are able to indulge in pleasures from around the world within the conveniences of a few city blocks, creating truly global citizenry. Education is a cornerstone of our city, and uh, Windsor West is a proud home of both the University of Windsor and St. Clair College. These institutions, in partnership with many private sector partners, are innovating and conducting world-class research that is helping Ontario, Canada, and the world progress. These amazing developments are happening today as I speak in this house. We host one of the busiest trade crossings in North America, representing fully one-third of all trade between Canada and the U.S. More trade goes across Windsor each day than Blue Water and Sarnia and all the Niagara crossings combined. My community of Windsor West and its mild winters and pleasant summers is home to many seniors. The wealth of knowledge and history that our seniors bring to the area enrich all those they encounter. It is for this reason and many more that I, as well as my colleagues of the Liberal Party, are committed to our seniors. I would not be here if it were not for the guidance and teachings of my parents and elders. As many here, I grew up listening to stories from my parents about when they first came to Ontario. Both came through Pier 21 in Halifax, my father in 1955 and my mother in 1963, and both hopped on a train to Red Lake, Ontario. I often imagined what it would be like, no kidding, what it would be like to land in a country where you don't know the language, the culture is different, and your family is thousands of kilometers away. What kind of services or supports would be required? A couple years ago, I had the pleasure of going to Halifax and visiting Pier 21. You could almost hear and feel the history of that place. The history of thousands coming to Canada, making their way over to Ontario for a better life for themselves and for their families. It is that history that makes us strong as we are and it is that history that demands that as MPPs, we continue to support our families and keep Ontario strong. It is in that context that I refer back to the recent throne speech. I am proud of the accomplishments this government has made over the last eight years in strengthening our health care system, our education system, and our infrastructure. As we move forward together, we must protect those gains while continuing to protect our communities, grow our economy, and support our families. We know that there will be challenges. The Premier often reminds us that we were elected to make difficult choices, not take the easy way out. That is why we are here, to govern, to make decisions, and to move Ontario forward. Governing is always more challenging in tough times. But with these challenges come great opportunities. That is why we must work together at accomplishing our goals. Ultimately, each of us has the same goal, to represent our, con our constituents and to make Ontario stronger for the next generation, just as our parents and grandparents did for us. We will be faced with tough decisions, but I commit that I will work with all members of this assembly to move forward, working together, for that is the Ontario way. I thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am filled with awe each time I walk into this glorious chamber, and I take great pride in being a part of the 40th Parliament of Ontario. It is not many that are given this opportunity and privilege to lead and govern this great province of ours. As the member for Windsor West, I will always bear in mind its history and the critical role that it plays for our province. Thank you. Here, here.
I understand.